What's the deal? You already know who it is. It's your boy Rich Dollar Six Four making up a man TV. And just like I said, we're gonna have a live interview with Loose Cannon. We got Loose Cannon in the building right now. We're gonna go up, just like I said, Monday, 921. We got the homie in the house, and we're gonna talk about it. Uh America's most wanted. You know what I'm saying? Loose against the world. We in here. What's up with it? What's the deal, King? Man, grinding every day. Every day grinding, is a grind. Grinding, huh? Yeah, I see you out there. So, uh, you know, we done ran a lot of videos about you on the channel. You know what I'm saying? You've been in the dimensions. You stay in, in what's going on in uh, the industry. And uh, I'm glad you was able to pop on the channel so my, my uh, listeners and my users can kind of uh, get a feel for you and we can answer mm -hmm. some of the tough questions that ain't being answered about you. Okay, so let's get started. We don't need to, like, after, um, what's the name, let's get to the hard questions and get to people that they want to know. They want to nope. know loose candy, so let's do it. Okay, so do, we, uh, we're going to do it like this. I'm going a, I'm to a do a, uh, I'm going to bring pictures in and we're going to, hear what you got to say about certain individuals or how you feel about this particular individual. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Or, you know, so, uh, we'll talk about this individual right here. And, uh, because it's somebody that, uh, you got a term of endearment for, yeah. and that's, uh, uh, your boy brick baby. Um, what's, what's the deal with brick baby? Where y'all at right now? You know, he's one of the head of, um, like, members of the Buster Avengers. So, Puka Butts is a real-life, like, a real-life goof troop. Like, right. he gets caught on every phone call. He cops and plead in everything he do. He never stand on no business. He's get on no jumper, yell and scream my name. And then he say, why is he doing videos of me? Because you do, you talk about me on your platform, well, on Adam's platform every single week. So me, I take advantage of it and I run content and I destroy your name. Like Brick, Brick Baby, aka Puka Butts, he's really like the 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 clown of the internet now. Like, why you feel we like We can't that? even take him serious. We you can't, can't take even him take serious? him serious. No, think about this, right? Everything he do, he retracts. He never stand on business. He always get caught multiple times on the phone, copping and pleading. I'm the type of person that I could literally say, I get on the phone with Brick, talk about my enemy that he's cool with, and he's going to actually talk about them too with me. He's going to tell me the dirt on them. He's going to tell me, like, oh, they did some buster stuff. And then at the end of the day, it's like, I use it against them, and then you're like, how do you find out this information? Well, Puka Butts told me. Puka Butts. Yeah, when did you come up with the term Puka Butts for Brick Baby? That's like a term of endearment, or, or is it because he's a baby, or what? what's up with that? Puka Butts is an old term, slave term, when it came down to, like, the uh, husband was doing the cotton field and then the, the wife was doing the um in a house. Oh, damn, you kind of looking at Cuz as a slave? I'm looking at him like as a slave. Do you get what I'm saying? Like after <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, we but we back at it like a real trap addict, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, as we add it, homie, let's get into this here. Um, I, I seen uh, one of your videos yesterday, and you was talking about um, Black Sam, Pistol Pete, and the whole thing surrounding, near, you know, somebody who's near and uh -huh. dear to all of our hearts. You feel me? Uh -huh. And uh, what was all that about? So basically, you know how, like, when I, I was talking about Big Useless, and right. useless, right? Right. So basically, it stemmed from remember when I broke the story when it came down to 
the DJ Khaled story and I told the real how it happened. And then, yeah. you know, Big U was lying and told him, oh, no, it did happen like that. It happened this way. And so when Black Sam did the interview with um, Big Boy, he told the same exact story that I told. And then right. the real found out that basically Big U was lying. So a guy named um, Watergun Pete, basically, <laughs> Water <Gun> Pete, huh? <laughs> basically he came, um, uh. flew Big U out to uh, to Miami uh, to Fat Joe's birthday party. When he flew him out to, to the thing, he got a suite. When he got the suite or whatever, um, Big U was like running his mouth, talking reckless. And then Water Gun Pete was basically um, putting his two cent in. And when he was putting his two cent in, it was a point that like, bro, you don't even know what you're talking about. You on the, you on West Coast business, and you way over there, supposed to be from New York, but you in Miami. You get what I'm saying? Like, well, let, let me ask you. Let, let's thing. let's slow it down because uh, all of the people don't actually know the details. What's leading up to why Big U is even trying to be around Fat Joe and them in the first place, and Pistol Pete and all them? What does that actually stem from? Okay, so basically, what happened is Big U was like. Hey nephew, can you go and take care of this issue with um Khaled or whatever? He played me. He didn't give me the right number. Mm -hmm. So I was say, like, yeah, I got you. So I pulled up to the scene, and when I pulled up to the scene, I grabbed um Khaled, like grabbed him, like, cause you got a problem with my uncle or whatever, like that. You doing some um low body or something? He was like, no, I love Big U. I love Big U. And I'm like, hold on, cause so I called Big U, me. I just put the phone on speaker, not thinking of anything like that, but I put the phone on speaker. Mm -hmm. And then um, Callie was like, hey, your nephew got me or whatever like that. And uh, he was like, and Callie was like, I love you, Big U. And then and Big U was like, I don't know why my nephew doing that. I don't know why mm. he's doing that. Like, So Big U sent you like, somewhere to make a move. And then when you got there, and you did what you did. Now he switched it up and turned you into the bad guy. Yeah. He turned me into the bad guy, right? And then after that happened, um, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Dan Homer, you trying to ruin uh, anything I got going in this um, industry. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay. So I, I that was duly noted. I was like, okay, I, I got you. You you got one up on me. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he ended up getting Khaled number, and then next thing I know, Khaled started you know donating stuff um, to the school, buying them like Gatorade Jordans <coughs> and sending them cleats and all, all types of stuff. He flew him and Stacy out to uh, his house. Um, he had chefs there cook for him. So I, I realized it was just a play. To, to get, get in, him because closer to Khaled. Yeah, get closer and and get intuitive when it comes down to the industry. Make mm. his way and um, you know, in certain things, so he could leech onto other people. So, um, I hear that a him. lot. I hear that because a lot. He had no hustle. I hear that a lot. Uh, when people start talking about Big U, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like he doesn't have. Uh, he got ties to the industry, but he don't have knowledge about industry. I've heard that from you. I've heard that from WAC. Uh, tell us, how does Big U get to this Everybody. point and not have that knowledge of the industry like that? Uh, because uh, remember when he was locked up and when he was locked up, uh, when like corrupt and everybody else is making their moves in the industry and stuff. All he seen was the example of Suge Knight. Mm. So that was his go-to move. You get what I'm to saying? To try to so be a Suge, huh? Got, yeah. So when he got home, he was hanging out with Suge and doing certain things with Suge and like going out with Suge. So it was like to a point where he was trying to emulate should night mm. you get what i'm saying but he yeah. wasn't trying to do it on by himself or do it with people he used like 
the homies and stuff like that to push the direction, but he always lied to him. He had a a jail mentality. You know how like um you could meet Obama cousin in jail. Are you you meet these niggas that have helicopters in jail and all, all kind of shit like that? Because you know, oh, yeah, yeah, jail yeah. niggas nigga you just be being rich in and jail. Anything in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah be all you can be ass they, nigga. They, yeah, they they get the a couple of soups, couple of um a uh, few dollars on their books and like they demand you get what I'm saying in their eyes. But in, in actuality, he used that and then he translated that to the streets. Mm. Well, I'm going to show you another uh, person that's associated with Big U. And you, you tell me how this thing ended up and it got lined up. Yeah, so um, basically Big U um, had Yui take what's the name to the New Jacks. And when he took um, Gilly to the New Jacks, basically Gilly got stripped down. And Gilly was yelling with his kids, Big U brought me over here. But Gilly didn't understand that it was a play. Right. He was food. Mm. So when that came about, basically Nipsey found out about that. They was doing a movie together. And basically, Nipsey took him twenty thousand, and he was like, "Man, I don't have everything or whatever." And then he gave him the the twenty thousand, and then we found out that half the jewelry was fake. Damn, Gilly was running around with bogus jewelry on. Fake, fake jewelry. <laughs> Saying it so, not a million dollars worth, three dollars bill, and a hundred yeah. fifty dollars worth of chains. No. Aww. See, people don't understand, right? It, it's a thing called social blade. Social right. blade, you could Google how much money they actually make. You get what I'm saying? These yeah. people just be fronting and they just use relationships that make themselves look bigger, but they really starving. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Billy and them don't make that type of money. They ain't making that type of money. Man, no. since, we, since we, uh, Shit, in Philly, we might as well stay in Philly, man. And uh let's uh let's uh let's talk, the let's talk about warrior. It. I know that's coming. <laughs> let's talk the about it, man. Warrior. Yeah, so yeah, sweetie pie. This <laughs> is a real sweetie pie, a real sweetheart, right? Because he act like he just so tough, and I swear to God. When we seen them at um, Fabulous Day, um, um, Day Show Party, right? When right. we walked in there, he was so polite. Honey Bun was like the most politest person in the world. He took off his chain and his watch and he handed it to me. Because all I said was, you know what this is about. And he already the knew what it was about. Yeah, because he was already popping it. So when oh, he was man. popping it, he thought like the security and everything was going to have his back, but he don't really understand when you are out of town and that stuff don't work with us. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, they ain't going to protect you and they ain't going to make you $15 an hour. But what I will say is this, you still move around in Philly, right? Of course. I was just out in Philly. Now, what's your man name out there in Philly? Because you, you was on Clubhouse with him not too long Quilly. ago. Quilly. Yeah. yeah. Quilly. Yeah, yeah, Quilly. Yeah, so you yeah, still move around in Philly? Now. And you ain't had no issues out there? No, Buttercup don't even stay in Philly. You get what I'm saying? This is where they be having all the, the what's the name? They come and visit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. He stay in Miami. So he don't even stay in Philly. So it's like, bro, you have no ties in Philly. And when you do come to Philly, all it is is like people, they want to party with you. They want to uh, um, get money out of you. You get what I'm saying? He don't hold no weight in Philly. You ain't uh, saying Meek Mills is a, re a real street dude. None of that stuff. All he nigga. is is no... 
No, he just known for screaming on a microphone. That's Man. it. When he now had look, beef with um, Jason on. You got one other. You said what? You got one other sweetie pie in that picture right there. And uh, I did, know you, you, you been in places where he been. Not saying you been around, dude, like that. But uh, you have said a few th choice things about Brother Love right there. Could you speak on a few things about Mr. Diddy? No, like, so Diddy is the type of person that he will um, flaunt things and, you know, want to act like he's giving you opportunities because he want to move in. So he was like a real life predator. And, mm. you know, he caught a bunch of people slipping. He caught, you know, um, Squeaky Meek. He caught. I caught um, Khaled. He caught Ross. He caught whoa, whoa, a, a whoa, lot whoa, of whoa, them. Whoa. You, you, mean, you say he caught Khaled? Yeah. Wait a minute. So DJ Khaled, he, that's how he became the best? Oh, man, we lost the homie. But he's going in right now, man. He's really going in he's right now. What? Okay. So that's how he became the best, huh? No, so you have to understand when he he, he was pushing the, the Ciroc boys, right? And when yeah. he first started, I was there when he came up with French uh, French Ciroc. You get what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's like when I seen him, like, I swear to God, I'm dead homies. Like, on NHC, like, he was groping, touching the French um, butt, you know, Whoa. like, grabbing his hips. He was, he was grabbing groping. his you hips. Said, wait, wait, wait. You said he was groping. groping. French Montana, yeah, red light, green light, go that whole the like, cold boys, nigga. Like touching the yeah. So basically, when that happened, or whatever, I was like, damn, what's going on, or whatever, like that. Next thing I know, they disappear. When they disappear, did he sweating? He come back drenched. No, um, no say it ain't so. Yeah. Yeah, French had the arch, arch in his back, like the St. Louis uh, emblem. You get what I'm saying? Oh my God, <laughs> French man, and, and, damn! And, and then Diddy was like, "Everybody come together! Everybody come together! Let's toast! Let's toast! Let's toast!" And then he was like, "We just came up with a new Ciroc. It's gonna call be called French Ciroc." And And uh, everybody held up that I'm looking at this like, like this is crazy. The next thing you know, um, it just went crazy. That's when yeah. French, you know, was dealing with him and stuff like that. And then when French almost died, um, French said that he didn't, you know, check up on him or anything like that. Oh, did he didn't see him and in the hospital? So he, he got away from him after that. Yeah, his his heart was broke. Sweetie was like destruct. <laughs> it was, hey, look, let's get. See, let's, and it, it was, I got the pictures and stuff like that. Did I send you the pictures? No, you have to send me the pictures, man. I need them for my community, not the community that they in, but the community on YouTube. You feel <laughs> me? But let's get back out west, yeah. homie, because it's a whole lot of uh, it's a whole lot of people that you done came at. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you done been into, and I want to see what you have to say about these particular individuals. Like I said, I'm gonna fly pictures in here, and you just say what you gotta say. You know what I'm saying? Say what your issue is. Oh my God, <laughs> this is the biggest <laughs> sweetie pie of them all. Like he is just the worst. So sweetie pie, like you know, he be talking reckless and stuff and screaming and we hoping we praying to god his hair start growing but on another note one of the homies they called him and he was like listen bro i got cannon right here we are about five minutes away from your hood or whatever like that so they talking he was like you want to get in with cannon he was like hell no i don't want to get in with him you get what i'm saying so i realized right. after that like oh he's a buster like this is he all internet. Do you get what I'm saying? When I catch him, if I ever catch him because they don't come outside, I'm going to do something to him. And that's it. 
That's it. So, uh, man, we off that. But uh, let me ask you this also, because you um, you you done been on a lot of podcasts from the east to the west. I done heard other people speaking about you on podcasts. Like you heard the bodyguard CC. That kind of validated you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He was saying that, you know, when you talk about coming out west, mm-hmm. that loose cannon is somebody you have to pay attention to. You feel what I'm saying? And that's what led a, a, a lot mm-hmm. of credence to to things that you were saying. Because, of course, when when a person comes out and he is on spokesman, that's going to always be met with resistance. You feel me? And then when you was coming out, you saying mm-hmm. what you saying. You said what you saying about Big U. You just spoke about this person. You just spoke about this person. When other people start validating you, that's when other people start taking note. Um, on mm-hmm. another note, let's. Uh, this is one of our strongest connections, and let's talk about these people right here. Sam and Nip, what's your relationship with man, Sam you know, at this like, point? Man, Sam is my brother. See, uh, the thing is, Sam is like one of the greatest human beings on this earth. Um, he don't intend for nobody to have no malice. Um, he don't want to um, put malice or anything like that on different individuals. He just want to live his life. He want to make money. He want to be successful and he want to take care of his family and his community. Sam, he want to give people opportunities and he like, but right now it's like he in a uh, mess of position because it's like he was giving people opportunities and they killed his brother. So how do you feel like, about the interview that he gave about that? Uh, it was heartfelt. Do you get what I'm saying? Like his best friend gone. Yeah. His other half is gone. So yeah, no it's doubt. like people don't even understand that how close him and Nip was. It was it wouldn't be a Nipsey hustle without Black Sam. Black Sam was like the foundation. For Nipsey and people don't even really understand that. Yeah, that's like it was Black Sam and Adam. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. His, his cousin. His cousin. And, and it's like, so wh- whenever you see them, you already know they making power moves and they trying to do whatever it takes. They sacrificed so much, went through so much in the hood to be where they where they are now, and then all of a sudden his brother get killed. Yeah, that's a that's been a touchy subject uh, that sparked a lot of debate on the internet. Uh, it's been a lot of controversy surrounding Nip's name, uh, you know. And you have an individual that you pretty close with that uh, has been had some little back and forth with Nip, and that's Wax, somebody we talk to often. One of your your partners, your business partner. Let's talk mm-hmm. about your relationship with WAC 100 and how that came about. Yeah, so I've been knowing WAC for years, right? Mm-hmm. And people don't even understand that a lot of stuff that WAC was saying, it was being said because of um, Big U was telling WAC. So when Big U was giving WAC the information, um, Big E was telling Wack, run this. You get what I'm saying? Run this for me. You my homie. You my homie. Run this for me. Uh, and why you think Big E never said anything about what Wack was saying? Because he was giving him the information. Right. So you saying that Big E was the one coming out with all of this bullshit about the tape? And, and then all you know the credit. <laughs> Go ahead, um. Yeah, he gave the tape to um to Wack. You get what I'm saying? They, yeah. Well, Wack don't have the tape. Wack have screenshots. The, the the dude that had the tape was trying to sell it. Big, right. you put him and Wack together, and when right. he put him and Wack together, that's what happened. You get what I'm saying? So you saying Big, you was trying to run a squeeze play a, on A lot there. of people don't even understand that. Yeah, of course, because he wasn't. Nip wasn't going for it. 
So he was like, forget it. Let me just keep dropping receipts and receipts and receipts or whatever. That was hood business. That was only supposed to be us knowing. He was telling mm-hmm. Wack that. So yeah. Wack was his boy. So Wack was, you know, doing it. What you think was the straw that broke the camel's back uh, between Wack and Big U that uh, the se- severed their relationship? Okay, is when I got into it with Molly Maul. And when I got into it with Molly Maul, I showed that um, Big U didn't have no control over um, LA. And mm-hmm. Molly Maul was paying him. You get what I'm saying? So Molly Maul was paying him. And when Molly Maul was paying him or whatever, I, Molly Maul did some fraudulent business with me. So I had to teach Molly Maul a lesson. It was me and Offset. We had some business going on with um, QC and him. Right. So when I taught, uh, when I got at Molly Mall and I put a demo out there, Big U couldn't do nothing to me because I am the muscle. So Molly Mall was like, what I'm pre- paying you for when you can't even protect me from um, the person people. that's protecting you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, whacking them had like, differences because Molly Maul that's his people and um Big U was saying like like what you want me to do? So Big U tried to come and line me up, it didn't work. And Oh, so you said Big U tried to line you he, up. Yeah, yeah, he tried to line me up. He was like, um uh, meet me in the fronts or meet me on Brian I said which one you want to meet me at? So I put up the BG. He had like ten of the homies. I ran through the first two of them, and then the other homies is looking like, who's going to go next? And he was like, no. and then I tell him, I said, man, you could get down too. Neighborhood Crip, we're going to get down. And then he was like, oh, my nephew is a fool. I love cuz. All this other stuff like that. And then it was no more after that. And I was mm. still pressing Molly mm. Mall, doing whatever I wanted to do, and nobody was going to tell me otherwise. So basically, Wax seen that going on. He tried to speak up about it. Molly Ma was um, back doing whack, telling uh, whack um, conversations that he was having to Big U and vice versa. And that's how, uh, and then basically, um, Wack called the check Big U. was like, nigga, I didn't say this and I didn't say that or whatever. They ended up getting into it and then it just went there and um big U was like listen cuz i need you to do something for me you get what i'm saying i need oh, you to take you to care of something whack. yeah and i was like nigga i ain't about to do nothing to whack y'all niggas gonna get along and y'all gonna come back together then uh it was a concert and um a game concert and he brought corrupt along so gang um led the homies in and when the homies came in or whatever like that they tried to um rush back rack whack pulled out and he told big U, he was like nigga i ain't gonna shoot them first i'm gonna um shoot you first so what you want to do and they had a standoff oh um, so whack and whack and big U ended up having a standoff yeah so so th- this is what the coward big U do he sits in a car, sends the homies in there. Wack is going out, walking out. He have a confrontation and stuff like that with the homies. He draw, pull his thing out. Um, and he pointed to, to Big U and was like, nigga, I'm going to get at you. I'm going to blow you down uh, first. You get what I'm saying? Uh, they might kill me, but I'm going to blow you down. We're going to both be gone. So... They they basically cease fire at that moment, right? So, um, Wack was like, like, how can you do that to me? You get what I'm saying? And then I felt like the same thing with um, JC on is because basically, like, that's your manager. You go out the next um, after the event, y'all go to a strip club together. You get what I'm saying? Oh, like, so you saying you saying you feel some type of way about game? 
Yeah, yeah. Game game went to uh go hang out with Big U and uh, and the homies and stuff like that right after um Big U and them tried to do that to Wack. So I felt like he was disloyal. Damn, I so felt what's, like he what's, was what's Wack's relationship with game now? No, it's just it's cool, it's whatever, but at the end of the day, they still do business. But my thing is it's like game is a disloyal um bitch you ass saying, nigga. You, you saying the way you at? looking at it, game is disloyal. Yeah, he but game always been like that. Game be always be acting like he like this super tough nigga and yell and scream, but he's a power puff girl. You get what I'm saying? Just puff up and nothing. He's a powder puff. Yeah, he he's a big old sweeter sweetheart. <laughs> hey, damn. So man. it's like no, but see the thing is it's like a lot of people in this industry, you be thinking they like super tough, and they don't even be like that. You see how I expose Spider Girl. You get what I'm saying? Like all these dudes be acting like they just like this big man mammoth and they could get on a microphone and scream. But what you gonna do after you leave that booth? You have to live what you say. They don't. They want to tongue wrestle. That's it. Yeah, so I hear uh I see you you um you multi coastal. So you on the west coast, you in Philly. You you know niggas in Atlanta, but let's talk about New York, and we gonna round it off with this New York stuff, cause uh, just seeing you with a Sean Campbell, and uh, I can't remember the other cat's name, but uh, it was uh, live with you, a Sean Campbell, Kilogram, uh, uh, China Brim, and Whack. Whack. So mm -hmm. how did you mm -hmm. hook up with Hassan Campbell? Cause that's a that's an odd connection. So basically, the the dude Kilogram was like, uh, "I want you to meet Hassan Campbell and stuff like that." But he have a problem with Wack. And I'm like, so I asked Wack. I'm like, Wack, you got a problem with him? He was like, No, I don't have a problem with him. Then I talked to Hassan Campbell. They was like, I found out that. He put out that Nipsey um, phone call with um, with Wack, right? Yeah, like about a year and a half ago. And when he, yeah, he put out that that phone call. And when he put out that phone call, it was basically all the stuff that um, Big U was telling Wack. <laughs> Wack was saying, "You get what I'm saying?" Yep. So w when that phone call happened or whatever, Wack, uh, I mean. They got on odds. Wack took his YouTube um channel. You get what I'm saying? His monetization and stuff like that. Took it, shredded it, destroyed it, right? Right. So I was like, okay, well, let's get back and let bygones be bygones and let's talk. Then next thing I know, I'm on here and they talking about he got molested and um nut shot up on his face and all types of stuff by Bambada. You didn't know you <laughs> didn't know you didn't know none of that? None of this. <laughs> no, so I'm thinking to myself, like, like cuz what is I'm getting myself into? You get what I'm saying? So and he over there telling a the story, <clears throat> like, I'm like, bro, you should have killed that nigga. <laughs> They they that they say he was the they say he was a child victim, homie. They say he was in his early teens when he got died by Bambada, you know. Uh, but uh, we'll leave it yeah, there. They, but I heard I he went that, back as a man. You know, I heard he went back and gave Bambada a hug as he's been an adult. So I don't know. He might have if he enjoyed it. Or if maybe he forgave him. Maybe he maybe he was just a sweetheart. You know what I'm saying? But uh No man. That's <laughs> that's a lot different than the story I heard. We gotta we gotta be we gotta be uh you know what they say, you gotta be uh you gotta have compassion for the victims, homie. You know what I'm saying? No, you can't have a compassion for a victim and he uh, dope giving that nigga a hug that he just 
talking about he molested like what that don't even make sense did that make sense no it don't make sense in my book but maybe you know what i'm saying maybe in hassan campbell you know, maybe it makes sense to bro you know what i'm saying but uh, you know the crazy part about it is this story is coming out he want to go live again so i'm thinking to myself like Man, certain questions I have to just ask. Yeah. Hey, they you, be, you they think be you're a, asking would, me? Would you ask him that live? Huh? Would you ask him that live? Like, Hassan, when Bombada of course. Put, put it pulled it out, why didn't you stop Cuz? Like, hold, hold up, Cuz, what's happening with you? Like, how does it yeah. get all the way from over there to over here, homie? Yeah, that's a whole lot to be asking. <laughs> we ain't gonna yeah. get into that. You hey, know, you know the that? crazy part, right? We on we on live stream last night with um our Kelly cousin, right? Right, right, right. So these niggas asking me about like. <laughs> R. Kelly and stuff like that. I'm t telling them he might not be guilty of touching his daughters, but he's guilty of all the other stuff. Yeah, all the other stuff. I don't, I don't believe, believe his daughter. I'm just sorry to say I don't want to be like, like I ain't got no compassion for nobody. But you had plenty of time when when he went on Gail King, when he went on all these other shows. This ain't no first time R. Kelly done had sexual shit going on in his life. He had that shit in the '90s and. They went to the house and they checked all the kids. Now, you know, they didn't find nothing. So I ain't going for that one. You know what I'm saying? Man, that age ain't nothing but a number. That song <laughs> aged terribly. That aged terribly. <laughs> that aged terribly. So, um, hey, what you working on right now, Luz? You know, you done had the TV shows. You done had your uh, Baddies and the Beast. What, what, what you got cooking right now? Yeah, so we got a big... We man, thinking about cooking, we got a song called Cookout that's okay, gonna right. go national. And then we yep. And then we got also um Drake jumped on it. And then mm -hmm. I got another song with Drake. And then um we got a lot of stuff. I got songs with Offset, Rihanna. I seen online where Brandon. it said you you did you open up for Drake before? No, no, I never opened up for um, oh, okay, Drake, okay. but it's like we did a whole, we did a whole lot of other things together. You know what I'm saying? A whole lot of music projects together. Damn! How do you how do you establish a relationship with somebody like Drake? Uh, I've been in the industry since I was like 14 and a half. So, right. um, like making beats and stuff and, and writing and stuff. So it's like at the end of the day, it's like. It's, it's easy when you're around that circle. You always meet connections and stuff like that. And, and Drake always been a stand-up guy to me. He never... Um, so you never got in thing. the... He Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you now. Hey, so you never got in that West Coast versus Toronto shit, huh? No, nah, hell no, because it's just all goofy. Like, that's a whole nother country. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And people be talking about like, oh, well, I'm going to do this to Drake How He moves like the president. Yeah. He ain't even going to get close. Yeah. Like, it's just real goofy. Hey. And if Drake, if Drake didn't then want you to get... Anybody that got money wants you to be gone, he can. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, with that he ain't type thinking of about that. This is music. Yeah. It's music. Well, hey, Luz, I ain't gonna hold you up all day, man. It's been a hell of an interview. You done dropped bars in here. You done came in here and uh gave a hell of a resume, you know what I'm saying? And you stand on what you stand on. That's why at the making of a man TV, that's why we fuck with people like you. Because, uh, you know, you actually doing what you say and you're saying what you're doing. You know what I mean? And no, we appreciate you for uh, giving us the opportunity to interview you. And uh, if you want to say anything going out. No, wait for part two. Neighborhood, we out. We out.